In this episode, take a look at the blood-soaked Albanian narco gangs that mean people can get cocaine in British cities quicker than a pizza. And the trail of devastation left in their wake that should shame the middle-class addicts who fund them. On a sunny late winter morning in Brighton, a scene has become chillingly familiar. He's playing out in a coffee shop in the High Street Mall. A group of men in their 20s and 30s, some wear designer clothes, Armani is a particular favourite, are huddled around a table in deep discussion in their native language. They laugh and joke as they brazenly count the wads of banknotes in front of them, oblivious to the other customers and clearly delighted with the profits from their business activities. Known locally as the Elbows, these men are drug dealers at the bottom of the chain in organised crime groups that supply cocaine 24-7 to customers in the city of Brighton, Hove and beyond. Occasionally the dealers may be joined by assistant managers who oversee illegal drug operations in the East Sussex resort. But the UK-based Albanian crime lords behind the highly lucrative enterprise are careful never to set foot in the city or consort with their operatives. And as for the real masterminds, Albanians such as Drayton Rezepi, known as the King of Cocaine, are many thousands of miles away in Ecuador, where they engage in a bloody battle with rival mobsters to secure a monopoly of the supply of cocaine to Western Europe. One Brighton resident, a man in his 30s, would like to keep his identity secret because he fears about speaking out. He said how the Balkan suppliers of cocaine here run a military-style operation. I would say you can get cocaine delivered in Brighton quicker than getting a pizza. He insists he is forsworn on the drug, but used it long enough to get a sense of how things operate. I'd ring my Albanian, give a postcode, and it'd be with me in five minutes, drop to the front of my door. The Albanians don't have to advertise. They don't change their numbers. They simply build up customers. And if you go into any pub in Brighton and ask someone where they got their gear, they will say the elbows. I have seen them. The higher up the business you go, the more designer clothes they wear. Yet the lower down you go, you see the dealer may be underweight and not wearing nice clothes. They're staying awake 24 hours a day as the drug delivery doesn't turn off. In Brighton Mall, there's a coffee shop and the top people are quite often there, wearing designer clothes and always flaunting money. Generally, if you're there, they'll be counting out money in the public eye. You might have individuals, maybe students selling a little bit, but usually it's the Albanians doing it all. It's massive. Which begs the question, is the National Crime Agency, the NCA, now in its 10th year up to the job? The question has profound political implications. In 2022, 12,301 Albanians arrived in Britain on small boats, out of a total of 45,755 illegally crossing the channel. That figure is expected to rise in 2023. The majority are believed to be economic migrants seeking a new life in the UK and have no intention of falling into the clutches of the Albanian crime gangs established here. Unfortunately, a significant proportion inevitably do. Earlier this year, the concern was given to New Focus by a reporter in The Observer. According to the newspaper's investigation, dozens of youngsters who had recently arrived in the UK without parents or carers have disappeared from Brighton Hotel, run by the Home Office. It is a pattern that appears to have been repeated along the south coast. The Home Office was apparently warned repeatedly by police that the vulnerable occupants of the hotel will be targeted by criminal networks. Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper described the revelations as truly appalling and called on the government to reveal how many children have disappeared and what was being done to find them. Wherever the truth about their disappearance, the potential for Albanian organised crime gangs to recruit youngsters 
who would be clean skins because they are unknown to the police. To work for them in East Sussex is obvious. So he was driving this evil trade on the south coast. The Albanian Mr Big supplying cocaine to Brighton is a man in his 30s who lives in London. He is known only by an initial. He drives a £100,000 Mercedes G-Wagon and is renowned for his gold bling accessories and a love for Gucci and Versace. Such is the fear this individual instills. Nobody is prepared to say what letter of the alphabet he is known by. One can only hope that detectives do. Sussex police have declined to comment on the potential nationalities who are supplying cocaine in Brighton. However, a number of Albanian drug dealers operating locally have been jailed in the past few years. In 2017, catering manager Mevlin Demmer and eight of Albanians were sentenced to a total of 45 years for their part in a Brighton-based drugs and money laundering ring. Demmer was in the UK on false Bulgarian passport and the Demmer dynasty has form in the area. He's linked to gang warfare, which erupted in Hove after a long-running feud in May 2004. When old Tim Melita, 23, an Albanian club doorman, was murdered. Venus Demma, Flemma Tupelli and Hermer Demma were given life sentences for stabbing him 20 times in his car after he finished work at the Pussycat Lap Dancing Club. Endrit Lazari and Mevlin Demma were both cleared of those charges. More recently in October 2018, a five-strong Albanian drug gang was sentenced to a total of 67 years at Hove Crown Court. Evidence produced at trial included a list of 6,397 customers in the Brighton area who were involved in more than 155,000 separate deals worth £6.5 million through a call centre operating around the clock. In September 2021, Lecha Sahib of no fixed address was found carrying 30 bags of cocaine while delivering to customers in Brighton from a hired taxi. He was sentenced to Hove Crown Court to 22 months for possessing cocaine with intent to supply and he was deported back to Albania. These are notable successes, yes, but given the lucrative and established market in the resort, it is inevitable that other gangs will move in once police have taken out the rivals. Liverpudlians used to supply cocaine round here, but they're not here now. In the past 10 years, the Albanians have come in and cocaine started being sold much cheaper. The typical drugs gang would involve a manager or boss sitting in his house somewhere, probably not in Brighton. They would have people under them, their assistant managers in Brighton, and they would have their runners on the streets, and they're all Albanians. People running drugs on the streets, dropping off tickets, little bags or wraps of cocaine, and other drugs to customers are victims of human trafficking. They are sold on false hopes. It's like they're victims themselves. It's the people at the top who are making the money. The people below them delivering the drugs are on cocaine themselves. Sussex Police said it dedicates significant resources towards tackling the supply and use of Class A drugs in the county. And it's true that over the past 12 months, Police in Brighton and Hove have disrupted dozens of drug supply operations and arrested hundreds of people linked to the drug trade. But are Sussex Police and the NCA adopting the right approach? How many Albanian Mr Biggs have they successfully brought to justice? And are they guilty of going after low-hanging fruit? People at the bottom of the crime empires who are simply replaced if arrested and charged. Drighton Rezepi is nicknamed the King of Escapes for having escaped from prisons in Belgium and Albania. He's also known as the King of Cocaine for his success in getting cocaine into Europe. He now appears set to exploit a legal loophole to avoid extradition to Europe where he's wanted for a series of gangland crimes including murders. Rezepi was featured on Scotland Yard's most wanted list. is typical of many Albanian narcos based in Ecuador 
who by sidelining traditional middlemen, negotiate directly with the producers of cocaine in South America and command the entire supply chain of the drug from South America to Europe, and in particular, the UK. Senior British law enforcement sources believe people traffickers bringing Albanian migrants across the channel are working with drug lords to provide foot soldiers to supply cocaine on the UK streets. Clearly something isn't working because the UK is awash with drugs. It's awash with cocaine. As the bloodshed continues in Ecuador and the insatiable demand for the drug in the UK, the Albanian narcos are surely having the last laugh.